Welcome back to Fan Nation, presented by J.P. Roofing. One of the most iconic photos in sports history was from the 60 World Series when the Pirates took on the Yankees. The only thing is that the photo wasn't of any players. It wasn't even on the field. No, this photograph happened 535 feet in the air when one fan stumbled upon the best seat in the house. It's 1960. The Pittsburgh Pirates and the New York Yankees are in Game 7 of the World Series. History would be made that day, not just on the field, but atop the University of Pittsburgh's very own peanut heaven. What makes a, an interesting photo is that it's sort of a microcosm of what happened in the whole town and what happened to the spirit of the people in Pittsburgh. The cathedral was much more central than it, it probably is today because many of the classes were here. I got here in the fall of 57. Well, I studied politics, philosophy, and economics. I, I knew I wanted to be a lawyer since I was seven years old. After I got back from law school, I had the good fortune of going to work for a law firm, which one of the partners was Thomas P. Johnson, who owned 15% of the Pirates. So I got to represent a lot of the ball players. Radio was my first real uh, initiation and then we would persuade my dad to come down and we'd come down to a Sunday doubleheader at Forbes Field. I spent many days there watching Ralph Kiner and Hank Greenberg. Uh, Hannes Wagner would be sitting in the dugout uh, as a uh, sort of an honorary coach. 1960 I was a senior starting in my senior year there in the fall. The whole town became fascinated with baseball and uh, you know, the Pirates were not favored in going into that World Series. If you look at the history of the World Series and, and baseball from the mid-1920s up until the 60s, I mean, every year or two, the, the, the Yankees were in the World Series. And if you think about it, the Pirates hadn't been in a World Series since 1927, and the Yankees beat them four straight. They had Mantle, they had uh, Whitey Ford, they, you know, they, they had a, a great team. and. Now the Pirates had a wonderful team with pitching like Paddox. He had a, a great second baseman called Bill Mazeroski. I'm sure that everybody I saw, every friend I saw, we talked about the prospects of what's going to happen in, in the game seven. I didn't have a ticket to the game. I decided I would go to the library on the fifth floor and do some work. Game started, the librarian he was probably not allowed, but he had a radio. I was walking over to the librarian's radio, and we were listening. Well, what happens? The Pirates pull out to four nothing lead, and I'm saying this is too much. I got to, I got to figure out a way to see this game. And that's when I thought this is a tall building, and there's got to be somewhere that I can look out and see this ball game. So I think I came up as high as I could on the elevator, and so I get to this floor and I see this setback. I crawled out a window, get out on this uh, roof. And I got out there and a couple people already had foreseen this and they were out there. Some kid came out through the window and he had a, what we then called a transistor radio. Well, he tunes in to the radio broadcast and turns it up so that we could all hear the play-by-play. -play. You can see Ralph Terry throw the pitch. mighty blow that went out way over the left field fence. So I generally got to see Maz circle the bases. Uh, and by that time, uh, as you might imagine, they call it one of the great sports photos of the 20th century. I didn't know there was a photographer up there. Something inspired him to think that, well, I'm gonna take a picture of these students much more so than anything that was going on on the field, like a home run going over the left field wall to win the ball game. People poured out from everywhere. The streets in Pittsburgh, the people all came out. I, I, I suspect it was the, the biggest street celebration since VJ Day in 1945, when the same thing happened, everybody went out in the street. It was a fascinating, exciting game. As fascinating and exciting as it was, we thought it was only right to have Woody relive the moment. Sure that he crawled out there and he didn't come forward. He took the picture from right by this window. 
it's been 62 years since I've been out on this ledge. So it's, it's been a while. This, if you look at my picture, this is where I was. They often use the word iconic in connection with this photograph. And you know what? I'm, I'm glad to be part of it. <laughs>